The world of the near future is a complex system in which humans and replicants neighbor each other. The replicants do the hardest work and are practically disenfranchised. A policeman named Kay keeps an eye on the replicants, trying not to let the situation become too tense. In the first scene, Agent Kay, a Nexus 9 replicant, flies to a protein farm outside Los Angeles in his spinner vehicle. He's there to find Sapper Morton, a Series 8 replicant who has deserted. After a short, intense fight, Morton tells Kay that as a newer model, he lacks a deep understanding of humanity. He suggests that Kay would not help humans in killing his kind if he had seen the kind of miracle Morton has. After retiring Morton, Kay notices a flower by a dead tree near the farm, which leads him to discover a hidden chest buried underneath. He calls his office to send a team to dig it up. Kay then returns to the LAPD office, where he passes a routine baseline test for replicants. He heads back to his apartment in a rundown part of the city, where he spends time with Joy, a holographic woman AI. Despite their inability to physically touch, Kay has developed a close relationship with her. To take her with him outside, he has purchased a portable hologram projector, freeing her from the stationary console at home. Now, Kay can bring Joy, his holographic companion, to the rooftop of his apartment in the heavy rain, which even lets her interact with physical objects. Joy is overjoyed by this new experience. However, their exploration of her enhanced abilities is cut short when Kay is summoned back to the police station. At the station, the forensic team has uncovered a chest containing the bones and hair of a woman who appears to have died from childbirth complications about 30 years ago. Examination of the bones suggests she died from an emergency cesarean section. A closer look reveals a serial number etched onto one of the bones, revealing the deceased to be not human, but a replicant. This discovery is shocking because it was previously believed replicants couldn't reproduce. Kay's boss, Lieutenant Joshi, is deeply concerned by this revelation. She believes that if word got out that replicants could reproduce, blurring the lines between them and humans, it could destabilize what's left of society. She orders the evidence destroyed and instructs Kay to eliminate the replicant child, despite the ethical dilemmas it presents, considering it was born, suggesting it has a soul. Before leaving, Kay takes a lock of the replicant woman's hair for further investigation. Kay visits the Wallace Company for information on the serial number and hair. The company, now operating in the starkly lit remains of the Tyrell Pyramid, may have difficulty retrieving data due to a massive data loss from an electromagnetic pulse EMP event known as the blackout in 2022, which erased almost all digital records. However, they find some surviving hard copy data. Louvre, a replicant employee at Wallace, assists Kay by providing access to an old memory file, an audio recording of Rockel, an experimental replicant who disappeared three decades ago. In the recording, Rocco is speaking with a Blade Runner named Rick Deckard. Kay senses a profound bond between them. Louv expresses gratitude to Kay for helping resolve Rocco's case. Kay investigates Deckard and discovers his former colleague, Gaff, now in a retirement facility. Gaff shares that Deckard and Rocco fell deeply in love and chose to run away together. When asked if he anticipated Deckard's departure, Gaff affirms, noting a certain look in Deckard's eyes indicating his days of chasing replicants were over. Louv informs her boss, Wallace, about her findings. Wallace, though blind, utilizes small flying drones to see. During a moment where he observes a newly activated female replicant, he shows a mix of care and cruelty by cutting her abdomen, upset over her inability to reproduce. He voices his frustration about the slow expansion of humanity into space, noting the necessity for replicants capable of reproduction to fulfill the demand. The secret to replicant reproduction, discovered by Tyrell, was lost in the blackout. Wallace orders Louvre to recover Rockle's remains and track down her child. Kay wanders through the city's lively district, intending to buy food when a mysterious woman cloaked directs three replicant prostitutes to learn what Kay knows. One named Mariette attempts to lure Kay, but realizing he's more interested in his holographic companion than real women, she backs off. Meanwhile, Louvre breaks into the police station, retrieving Rockwell's remains and eliminating a forensic worker who catches her. Back at Sapper's farm, Kay discovers a baby sock and a photo of a woman with a child, hinting that Sapper and other replicants have been safeguarding Rockwell's secret for years. He's disturbed by a date etched into the tree's base, 61021. 
After burning down the farm, Kay heads back to Los Angeles. When Kay reports back to Joshi, she informs him about the vanishing of Rockwell's remains. She then inquires about a childhood memory he cherishes. Although Kay understands such memories are artificial, he vividly recalls being pursued in an old factory by other boys who wanted his wooden horse sculpture, which he concealed in a furnace. Kay remembers the horse bore a date identical to the one on the stone, a detail he keeps to himself. Joshi advises him to search the DNA records for clues about the child's identity. Kay theorizes the date on both the tree and the horse signifies a birth date and delves into the DNA archives for someone born on June 10, 2021. He uncovers records for a boy and a girl sharing identical DNA, a biological impossibility, since identical twins should be the same sex leading him to deduce that one set of records might be falsified. The trail leads him to an orphanage outside the city where the girl supposedly died from a genetic condition, suggesting the boy might have been concealed there by replicants. His journey to the orphanage is halted when scavengers shoot his spinner down, but Louvre, monitoring him remotely, dispatches the attackers with precision strikes. Kay repairs his vehicle and continues to the orphanage, located within an abandoned ship segment. After pressuring the caretaker to allow access to the records, he discovers the relevant page is missing. However, the orphanage's layout eerily matches his memory. Venturing further, he finds the exact furnace and retrieves the hidden wooden horse. Confused by this discovery, Kay heads back home, pondering the implications. Joy is convinced that the discovery of the wooden horse proves Kay's childhood memory is genuine, suggesting that Kay is the child of Rockle, born naturally rather than created, giving him a soul unlike other replicants considered devoid of one and inferior to humans. She believes he deserves a real human name and starts calling him Joe. Skeptical about the authenticity of his memory, Kay is encouraged by Joy to seek an expert in implanted memories for clarity. Kay visits Dr. Anna Stilline, a specialist in crafting memory implants for Wallace Corporation's replicants. Stilline, confined within a dome due to her weak immune system, which prevents her from mixing with others, shares her background of isolation and creativity fueled by her solitude making her a leading memory creator. Kay inquires about distinguishing real memories from artificial ones, learning that genuine memories are imperfect and emotional, whereas fabricated ones often contain too much detail along with a piece of the creator's own experiences. Upon examining Kay's memory through a special device, Doctor, Stelline becomes emotional, confirming the memory's reality. This revelation upsets Kay, who storms out and is immediately detained by the authorities. Back at the station, Joshi is furious with Kay for not passing his baseline test, suggesting he might be terminated. Kay, suspended by Joshi, deceives her by claiming he has already eliminated the child. Returning home, Kay discovers Mariette in his apartment, a setup by Joy, who has planned to merge her holographic presence with Mariette to physically connect with Kay. The next day, Kay feels uncomfortable about the unconventional encounter. Mariette sneaks a tracking device into Kay's jacket, after telling her to go, Joy faces Marriott's mockery about her simple consciousness, highlighting that even replicants can feel superior to others. Kay warns Joy that they will soon be pursued. Joy insists on accompanying him to prevent her knowledge from being exposed. Kay hesitates, knowing that transferring her to the portable projector could mean losing her if it gets damaged, but he agrees to her request. Joy urges him to disable the projector's antenna, ensuring she can't be transferred or tracked, which effectively hides Kay's location from Louv. Louv confronts Joshi at the police station, demanding Kay's whereabouts. Despite Louv's threatening demeanor, Joshi refuses to cooperate, leading to her torture and eventual death by Louv, who then locates Kay through Joshi's computer. Kay consults Doc Badger about the wooden horse, discovering it contains radioactive tritium. They conclude there's only one place with such radiation levels and the specific wood type. Heading to the desolate Las Vegas, Kay evades detection, with Louv unknowingly on his trail. In an abandoned hotel casino rigged with traps, Kay encounters Deckard, who initially suspects Kay has come to kill him. After a brief scuffle, Deckard realizes Kay seeks answers. Deckard admits Rockle was pregnant but claims ignorance about the child's fate, explaining he left Rockle to protect her and the child teaching other replicants to falsify birth records and evade capture. As Deckard senses an intruder, he suspects Kay led them there, 
They attempt to escape in Deckard's spinner, but a missile strikes, disabling the vehicle and injuring both men. Louv and her team confront Kay, and during the ensuing struggle, Kay manages to take down a few of them. However, Louv overpowers him, inflicting severe injuries. She notices Kay's portable projector, destroys it, and with it, Joy is lost, leaving Kay devastated. Believing Kay to be on the brink of death, Louv abducts Deckard and returns to Wallace Corporation. A group of replicants, who have also been following Kay, find and care for his wounds. This group includes Mariette and is part of a movement seeking replicant freedom. Frisa, their leader, shares that she witnessed Rackle's death during childbirth and explains the concerted effort by her group, including Sapper, to safeguard the child, viewed as a beacon of hope. She believes the existence of a replicant child could challenge the denial of rights and freedoms to replicants. Frisa also reveals that their group orchestrated the blackout to destroy digital records, protecting the secret of Rockwell's ability to conceive and keeping the child hidden. Kay, believing himself to be Rockwell's child, is corrected by Frasa, who informs him the child was actually a girl. Confused, Kay questions how he could possess a genuine memory of Rockwell's child. Frasa suggests the memory's significance goes beyond his personal story, hinting it serves as a collective motivator for replicant freedom. Reflecting on his findings, Kay realizes Dr. Anna Stilline, who was emotionally moved by the memory, must be the child of Rockwell and Deckard. The replicants emphasize the urgency of stopping Wallace from extracting information from Deckard that could lead to the creation of self-reproducing replicants, urging Kay to intervene, even if it means ending Deckard's life to protect the secret. Back in Los Angeles, Kay is haunted by an ad for the Joy hologram, mourning the unique connection he had with Joy. At Wallace Corporation, Deckard is confronted by Wallace, who presents Rockwell's remains as a clue to the enigma of replicant reproduction. Despite Wallace's suggestions of a predestined relationship and purpose for him and Rockwell, Deckard denies knowing the whereabouts of their child. Wallace plays back the initial conversation between Deckard and Rockwell, stirring deep emotions in Deckard, who remains unyielding. Attempting to leverage Deckard's desires for cooperation, Wallace introduces a figure resembling Rockle as she looked 30 years earlier, mirroring her dress and hairstyle. Despite being visibly affected, Deckard rejects this imitation, noting the real Rockle had green eyes. Disappointed by Deckard's refusal, Wallace commands Louv to eliminate the replicated Rockle and instructs her to transport Deckard to an off-world colony for interrogation. Louv, with Deckard handcuffed, departs in a spinner flanked by two escort vehicles along the Los Angeles coastline. Kay intercepts them, dispatching the escorts and forcing Lube's spinner to crash on a beach. After landing his spinner nearby and exchanging gunfire, Kay engages Luvi in a brutal fight. Despite sustaining serious injuries from Luvi's attacks, Kay is left for dead. Luv attempts to unlock Deckard's handcuffs as their vehicle nears submersion due to the incoming tide, but Kay intervenes, Overcoming Lou V in a desperate struggle, Kay drowns her and frees Deckard, insisting the world will believe Deckard perished in the sinking vehicle. Kay brings Deckard to Dr. Stellan's facility, hinting that the cherished memories Deckard holds are actually those of his daughter. When Deckard inquires why Kay took such risks, Kay motivates him to meet his daughter. Inside, Deckard encounters his daughter, oblivious to their connection, amidst an artificial snowfall. Outside, Kay lies on the steps, gradually succumbing to his injuries, watching the genuine snowfall, content with his contribution to their story. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.